Gumbo is in my heart. It's in my soul. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, and in my family, gumbo season starts around Thanksgiving time. It is served for every major holiday leading all the way up to Mardi Gras and sometimes a little bit afterwards. What makes gumbo extra special to me is its diverse roots. The dish is over 300 years old and has several cultural influences from all over, from the Caribbean, France, Germany, and Native Americans. But many believe its origins are in the West African cuisine. The word gumbo actually derives from the word for okra in some West African languages. And its use of rice also indicates its ties directly to Africa. Rice was brought over during the transatlantic slave trade and became a highly cultivated crop in America. There's no right or wrong way to make gumbo. Well, there definitely is a wrong way to make gumbo. But today, the version we're making is going to have you falling in love with gumbo done the right way. So let's jump into the kitchen to make some gumbo, baby. So today we're making seafood filet gumbo, and it all starts with a homemade stock. Now, you can buy chicken, seafood, vegetable, or even beef stock, but people will look at you a little funny if you put beef stock in your gumbo. But hey, we're not here to judge. However, most families make their own stock at home using the vegetable scraps and the seafood scraps. To make it from scratch, we start with heating up some oil in a heavy bottom five quart pot over medium heat. Once it's hot, we'll add three blue crabs. You can find buku of these crabs in the Gulf of Mexico. There's definitely something magical going on in those murky waters that make them taste amazing. So don't use Dungeness or stone crabs. Trust me, it won't taste the same. Let these guys cook until their shells turn a bright orange. Then we'll add shrimp shells with their heads. These will make for a far more superior stock. We'll cook these until the shells turn pink. Now it's time to smash the shells. It's similar to mashing potatoes. Doing this is gonna help release all those extra juices. So really get in there and take out your daily frustration. And finally, we'll add some vegetable scraps and some seasoning. Cover this all with water and bring it to a slight boil. Then bring it down to a simmer for at least 30 to 35 minutes. Now we'll strain it and set it to the side. You see, making your own homemade stock isn't that hard and I know you smell the difference. Next, we'll move on to our own seasoning. We're gonna make our own Creole Cajun blend. And if you ever get a blend from someone else, make sure that they're from Southern Louisiana. I'm talking New Orleans, Opelousas, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, or the surrounding areas. Outsiders put weird stuff like chili powder and cumin in it. That's a big no-no, baby. We don't do that around here. Our blend is a combination of kosher salt, white pepper, black pepper, cayenne, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, dry thyme, and oregano. We'll whisk all of these together in a bowl. Man, it is starting to smell like home. Now, we're ready to start cooking this gumbo now. Grab a large pot, place it over medium high heat, and add in some canola oil. Cook this until it reaches a smoke point. You're looking for a faint white smoke. Anything thicker is gonna burn our roux. The smoke is so faint, the camera couldn't even capture it. So pay real close attention. This next step can be controversial. We're gonna add in some okra. Not all families add okra to their filet gumbo, but some people believe a gumbo without okra just isn't gumbo. We're team okra over here. Fry these for a couple of minutes until they turn to army green. This will remove all the slime. You don't need to eat slimy okra. After a few minutes, remove them from the pot and drain them on a paper towel. Let's move on to the roux. This is my favorite part right here, besides eating it. A roux is a mixture of flour and fat that's used as a thickener in all sorts of recipes, from fancy mac and cheese to soups and stews. Roux can be a variety of shades, from blonde to dark brown. Gumbo requires a dark brown roux, so we're using the oil for this. Typically, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to get that kind of roux, but I'm going to teach you a technique to get that dark brown roux in five minutes. Yeah, I said five minutes. We'll turn up our heat and get it back to that perfect smoke point. Remember, we're looking for a faint white smoke. Heating the oil before adding the flour will fry the flour quickly, giving it that classic nutty flavor. Whisk the flour until it turns a dark cocoa brown. If the roux is browning too fast, remove the pot off the heat while continuously stirring and reduce your heat to medium low. Look, you didn't believe me, huh? A beautiful, perfect cocoa brown roux in five minutes. So next, we'll add onion, bell pepper, and celery. This vegetable trio is known as the Holy Trinity. This is the backbone of pre occasion cooking. Two tablespoons of our seasoning blend. We're gonna stir this for two to three minutes and then add some garlic, bay leaves, and the rest of our seasoning blend. 
you want to add your seasoning in layers to add depth of flavor to your gumbo. Turn up the heat to medium high and gradually add the seafood stock. If you don't have a whisk, stirring in different directions will break up any clumps. We want a nice, smooth gumbo. Don't nobody have time for no lumpy gumbo. Then it's time to add our okra, smoked sausage, crabs, thyme, and Worcestershire sauce. Now there's a variety of proteins you can add to your gumbo. Personally, we love the smoked sausage, crab, and shrimp combo. Typically, you don't add chicken to your seafood gumbo, but hey, do what makes you feel great. If you don't like seafood or have an allergy, you can simply go with a chicken and sausage gumbo, which is also known as gumbo yaya. All right now, let's bring our mixture to a boil and then reduce the heat to a low simmer for one hour uncovered. Your house is about to smell like a New Orleans grandmother's house. Skim off any foam residue that rises to the top. This is just the flour cooking out, nothing weird. After about an hour, your gumbo should have thickened and reduced by a quarter. We are in the home stretch now. But before we get to that last step, we're going to take a quick taste just to make sure it's seasoned properly. So delicious. Then we'll add our shrimp and remove our pot from the heat. The gumbo is going to be so hot that the shrimp will cook in 10 minutes. Now it's time to eat, baby. Call your family over and get a bowl. We love to serve our gumbo over rice. Some people like more rice than gumbo. Others like it 50-50. I'm a more gumbo than rice guy. Do what you love. Garnish with parsley, green onions, and finish it off with some filet powder. Filet powder is ground sassafras leaves. This is the Native American part of the dish. It's gonna add that final distinct layer of flavor that can only be found in filet. Let me tell you now, this is a bowl full of love, flavor, family, heritage, memories, and everything else that's good and lovely in the world. I hope you love sharing a piece of my family history with your own family. Check out the recipe on tasted.co and let us know if you make this delicious seafood filet gumbo, baby. Oh, yes!